morning mug is now in session. Today is Sunday, the 17th of May, 2020. We're getting to the point of the mug that we now have props and costumes. Oh my goodness, episode 63 is now upon us. This day in history. Oh, I'm going to hold up on those because they're going to be good. Um, so let's get rid of our unusual holidays. Uh, today is Walnut Day. Cherry Cobbler Day. Take Your Parents to the Playground Day. If the playgrounds are open. It is Idaho Day. And it is also Pack Rat Day. I know what some of you are thinking. I need to heed my own commentary that I am a pack rat, but a definition of a pack rat is a collector of useful or useless objects. The origin of the term pack rat comes from a creature known as the wood rat. They are nesters and collect just about anything to make their nests, even if it's not that functional. And they're also distracted by shiny objects. Squirrel, something shiny. Um, so some suggestions if you want to do some spring cleaning and some downsizing. If there are clothes you haven't worn in the last year, move them on. If there are things you have not used in the last six months, move them on. I am a collector, a, a purveyor of knowledge. Yes, and I need to do some spring cleaning as well. Some birthdays, birthdays, happy birthday, Bill Paxton. Um, I think of Bill Paxton in Twister, yeah, um, and I think of him in Titanic. Um, happy birthday to the controversial comedian Bob Saget, born in Philadelphia this day, 1956. Another happy birthday, We're gonna, this is going to be a music one, feel free to dance along. Uh, by the way, the Spotify uh, official Morning Mug playlist, 105 songs, 7 hours, 57 minutes of music. Happy birthday, Enya. Born in Ireland this day, 1961. Just gonna let this go for a second. Pure Moods. I still have my Pure Moods CD and I am not gonna give that up. Classic. I think I even bought it off the television. Happy birthday, Enya! Uh, born this day in 1962, Craigie Fergie. Craig Ferguson, the Scottish comedian. He hosted The Late Late Show for a while. Uh, saw him live once and it was fabulous. Um, oh. It's that time again. Daily dose of Hanks, y'all. In 2012, Tom Hanks appeared on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Um, I did not post it. You can Google it. It's on the YouTube. Um, it is pretty funny, but there's a few controversial things, and this is on my school account, so not posting it. Um, but it was in 2012, and Tom Hanks was filming... Um, Saving Mr. Uh, Mr. Banks. So the uh, film portrayal of the development of Mary Poppins, and he plays Walt Disney. So he had his little his little Walt Disney mustache, and he said, "Yes, I'm playing. I'm playing Walt Disney. I can't draw a lick, but I'm playing Walt Disney." And I was like, "I can't draw either." I mean, that's a gavel. Can you tell? I don't know if you can tell. I can't draw very well either. Another way we connect? Yes. And also, they were talking about Downton Abbey. And Craig Ferguson said, and I love Downton Abbey, if, if, if you didn't know that. Fabulous. Oh. Oh. All things Downton. Love it. Um, so Tom Hanks, fan of Downton Abbey. I knew he had good taste. And Craig Ferguson said, season one is great. And then it turned into The Young and the Restless. And they're having this whole big uh, argument over Downton, Downton Abbey. So... That is your Tom connection for this day. There's always so many, but I'm trying to keep it limited. 
Uh, their birthday is born this day, 1965. Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. I put a few of those tracks in the playlist for you. And this day, 1985, Derek Huff. Those of you who are fans of Dancing with the Stars. So singer, actor Derek Huff, who's been quite busy on TikTok during the quarantine. Okay, so. Some this day in histories. I'm gonna do the funny one first. This cracked me up. All right, taking me back, middle school jazz band. Middle school jazz band. Now we all know the words, so let's sing along. Okay, sing along. <laughs> no one seems to know the words to Louie Louie. So this is what happened this day, 1964. Well, sorry. 65, but what happened in 64? So many parents were upset by the lyrics of this song by the Kingsmen. Um, it, it, the song was originally written in 1955 by Richard Berry and it was recorded in one take, poor audio quality by the Kingsmen in 1963. Parents are like, this is inappropriate language. We can't even handle this. People wrote to um, Robert Kennedy, Attorney General, say, fix this. Um, so the FBI launched an investigation into Louie Louie. Um, they played it on, of course, record at this point, 78 RPM, 45, 33 and a third, slowed it down, sped it up, tried to understand the lyrics. So this day, May 17th, 1965, the FBI said that the lyrics to Louie Louie were quote, officially intelligible. We have no idea. Let it go. We have no idea. So that just made me chuckle. Great tune. Great tune. So that is in the playlist for you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, another important this day in history. Got to get the serious music going for this one. Hence my attire. So I would be talking about this in class today. Um, if, if we were physically in class. No. No, I'll leave it. Okay. So this day, 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court made a unanimous decision in the Brown versus Board of Education case. So a little bit of context. So Brown, last name of the plaintiff. So this is a civil case. And there's a whole bunch of other plaintiffs, but Brown was first alphabetically, hence Brown versus Board. And Board is the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. The concept of Jim Crow, separate but equal, white and black facilities, white and black schools, separate. And because we're separate, we're equal because we both have it. That's definitely not the case. Funding was different. The quality of teachers, the quality of materials and facilities is going to be different. So this particular case made the whole way to the Supreme Court. Uh, Thurgood Marshall is the attorney for the NAACP. Um, he's eventually going to be a Supreme Court justice, Thurgood Marshall. So separate but equal, definitely not constitutional. So this is going to be the first step in the desegregation process in the United States when it comes to education. There are several states that didn't move forward with the integration. So we have segregation and integration. They didn't move forward with integration. So a year later was the Brown two decision saying, get it done. Okay, because the original decision didn't have a timeline. So saying, hey, we're working on it, we're working on it, was legally satisfactory until that second decision. So this connects to today's mug, and of course my outfit, because I'm rocking the Judge Judy thing. Um, today's mug is from viewer Carrie. 
and it made me do a little bit of thinking and a little bit of digging. So this one is of a streetcar, a Reading Railway, or sorry, Reading Street Railway car. And I started thinking about connecting to the Brown versus Board case about segregation, separate facilities, separate parts of a bus, separate parts of a train. And I did a little digging about Pennsylvania. There was a statute, uh, 19, sorry, 1869, 1869. So just a few years after the Civil War, African-American students were not permitted to attend public schools in Pittsburgh. Generally speaking, Pennsylvania has been very open, not having a lot of Jim Crow. However, there are a lot of de facto. Oh my gosh, I forgot to write it down. Please hold. It's not going to have the pronunciation guide. I'm so sorry. Your phrase of the day. De facto. De facto. De facto. Had a lot of de facto um, laws in place. So those are policies or procedures that you follow just because that's what we do. There's no legal basis for it. So um, I, I was doing a little bit of research on trains and I was watching the Craig Ferguson this morning and then I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 10 o'clock. You got to do your mug. You got to get it done. So uh, until I have a chance to dig some more, I'm going to put a link to the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum or the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. It is a Smithsonian affiliate, but it is part of the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. So a significant contributor to Pennsylvania history are the railroads. I just did some preliminary digging about say, segregated trains and I couldn't find very much about Pennsylvania in particular. But it all connects and it's okay that I don't have all the answers right now. Just getting you to think about some things. Okay, I think, yep, that's what I got for today. So uh, today is Sunday. I'm working on my garden a little bit, uh, realizing how weedy the weeds are. Um, I, I did some pulling of weeds this morning and I, I did clean the dirt from underneath my fingernails uh, before the morning mug. I should probably put gloves on. Yeah. Um, so until tomorrow, my friends, behave, be good, be kind, do some spring cleaning because it's pack rack day. Uh, try some cherry cobbler. If, if that tickles your fancy. Um, listen to some Louie Louie and continue to be an awesome person. So. Hey, be good, be kind, wash your hands, recycle. There it is. Okay, bye.